Hey Screamers, Lewis here from Fright Tour back again with another official video review from our 2018 Fright Tour. If you followed any of our social media on the night of October 6th, you would have known that on that night we visited not one, but two haunted attractions. Why you ask? Well, because they were only 30 minutes apart and it's a six hour drive from home. So I highly doubt that me and Joe are going to drive all the way out, do one, and then all the way back, and then all the way out again to do another. So if you followed us, you would know that we not only hit up Crawford School of Terror, which, by the way, the review has been posted, we also ventured about 30 minutes south of Crawford School of Terror to Fright Farm. After finding our spot and grabbing our passes, it was time to begin the night with Fright Farm, and we were ushered into a very long walkway that kind of wound around this gigantic tree farm, I guess you could say. And at that time, I kind of looked at Joe and I was like, there's nothing really going on. I don't hear any screams. I don't hear any banter. I don't hear any chainsaws. I hear nothing. Are we sure this place is going to be any good? And as I said that, we rounded the corner and a gigantic welcome sign came into view. We were nowhere near the actual main part of the attraction. Fright Farms grounds are huge and they are very well put together, very well constructed, neat, clean, organized. It kind of gave me the sense that we were about to experience something a little bit more intense, a little bit more extreme. I got very excited. I couldn't wait, but I had to take in the Medieval Midway and the Medieval Midway had unique uh, style games uh, to play for prizes. It had a gigantic gift shop that I guess they had just constructed. It had different uh, food establishments, a gigantic stage where bands would play. It felt very theme park-ish like, like carnival-like, which I don't mind, but a haunt to me isn't carnival, unless you're going to theme the entire attraction after a carnival, then you could do something with that. But we didn't come there for the bands, we didn't come for there for the games, we didn't come there for the food. Those are all extra caveats, as you will. But we came there for the haunt, and we could not wait to begin the night, seeing that they had four attractions on their website. So we began the night with the Hayride of New Return. So for those of you who have been following me for years, you know that Hayrides are more of an entertainment value than a scary value for me. There are so many underlying factors that can contribute to a Hayride's success. Uh, moonlight, heavy wind, the distance from scenes to the wagon... It just becomes more enjoyable than scary. Yes, there are still some startling scares like loud air cannons, flamethrowers, honking horns, loud bangs, you know, the usual stuff. But to say that I've actually ever come off of a hayride truly scared, it's never happened. So I always go into a hayride looking at how much fun I have, not how scared I was, not how creeped out I was. If that happens, then it's an extra bonus. But usually a hayride to me is just more fun. However... Hayride of No Return, I unfortunately cannot give a full-blown positive or negative review of the Hayride because I couldn't quite enjoy it because of people on my wagon. I don't know if Fright Farm allows intoxicated guests to come onto the grounds or if they sell alcohol there, but I would think it was the first because this guy had a open canister of something on the wagon that he was, uh, I mean, drinking in plain view of everyone and no one stopped him. But him and his friends were very heavily intoxicated. They kept screaming. He kept getting up. They kept crawling over to us and laying on our feet when people would try to scare them. I couldn't really pay attention to the haunt because I was just so upset and do so disgruntled with these people. And if you're watching Fright Farm, I strongly suggest not to let drunk people on your grounds or to even serve alcohol on your grounds because letting a drunk person into a haunt, especially a hayride or a maze, it can contribute to a lot of things. You could definitely injure someone. And these people were heavily, heavily intoxicated. It actually came to the point where Joe looked at me. He's like, this entire wagon smells of alcohol. I'm like, yeah, I got the whiff of like peach schnapps an hour ago. But I mean, I, I to, to say that I could honestly review it, I can't. The only thing I would say about the Hayride is it felt a little side happy. All of the scenes seemed to be on one side of the wagon. There were seven, seven total scenes on the left side. The right maybe only had one or two. Oh, and I did realize that on the website, it had stated that there are four attractions at Fright Farm, when in reality, there's only three. Because the Hayride itself of No Return is technically Hayride of No Return, and then this graveyard scene that they've had where they've split it up and made it a separate attraction. It's really not. It's a continuation of the hayride before you actually get to the mansion. Leaving the hayride behind us, it was time to get in line for the mansion, and the mansion from the outside looked like it was going to be a pretty impeccable, pretty decent haunt. 
It's a massive building that I thought was a pre-existing building that they had converted into a haunt. But come to find out, as you get closer up to it, it was actually constructed just for this purpose. So I got very excited, very anxious. I couldn't wait to get inside. I mean, I did want to walk around all of it from the outside and take photos and also the inside. I mean, I wanted to do that with no one in there with my camera, but of course that can't happen. But once inside, all of that anxiety, that excitement, that nervousness kind of left my body one by one. And the reason why is because the actors and the amount of actors that were in there uh, definitely uh, contributed to the downfall of this attraction. Sets, layout, scenes were top notch. But as far as the actors, they felt disengaged. They felt uninterested. Some of them were looking at their phones. Some of them were talking. Some of them were doing things on their Apple Watch as we rolled up and then all of a sudden springing into life and realizing that we're there. Sorry, that's a little late. Um, to me, I felt like the attraction was really too big for the amount of actors that they had in there. We did walk for a considerable amount of time and there were parts of it where nothing was going on. And I know that you can't have an actor every five feet, but having an actor may, maybe in every room or every building um, would definitely work. There were uh, huge swaths of time of walking where nothing was going on. I actually looked at Joe and I said, this is a major disappointment. And I kind of felt like maybe I was being too critical until the guests in front of us turned around and asked if we had been scared once as well as the ones in back of us. And it became this thing throughout the entire attraction where we were commentating on what was going on. It it made me feel that I was right on point with what I thought as I began my walk. It's a shame because the attraction really is beautiful. They have put a lot of money and time into this attraction. And I feel that if they were to downsize it or split it into two different attractions and then beef it up, uh, it would definitely be much better than it was. It was, it was a major letdown because I, like I said, I would have loved to walk through that attraction with no one and just take tons and tons and tons of photo because visually it was very appealing. It was very pleasing. I liked it in that regard, but to say that it was at all scary, unfortunately it left me, jo me and Joe high and dry and also the guests around us. Coming out of the mansion, it was time for their third and final haunt, Paranoia, which was new for the year. I didn't do any research on the website except to see how many attractions they had. So Paranoia was completely blind to me. As we waited in the line and the front entrance came into view, I realized that it was a pitch black maze. And I use quotations because it's not actually an enclosed attraction that's painted all black and you walk through in darkness. Uh... Unique touch, unique twist, definitely something different, but I would say it definitely needs some work and it definitely needs some revamping. Uh, at the front, you're given a blindfold. Now, I hate to be assuming Allison, but I don't know if the blindfolds were washed nightly. I don't even know if you can wash a blindfold, if you can comment below. But to me, it kind of skeeves me out. And the reason why is because it's not like you're putting a blindfold here or like on like a like a, 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 a just a plain part of your your skin you're putting a blindfold over your eyes where your eyebrows are there's open areas of your eye and it just kind of skeeves me out that i am putting something on my face that hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of other people have been wearing now don't get me wrong i drove six hours so i'm definitely putting the blindfold on but it kind of creeped me out and the girl in front of me was hysterical she definitely didn't want her blindfold on. I mean, Joe didn't put his on. He was behind me, kind of leading me through. Once you got in, you were told to use your right hand and follow the rope. Skeeve number two. I'm touching a rope that thousands of other hands have touched. After the first, like, good stretch of it, I felt dirty. I felt like I needed to wash my hands. My hands felt slimy. They felt dirty. I needed, I needed to get out of there. I was completely skeeved out. This attraction wasn't enjoyable, not only because of the ick factor that came with it, with the unwashed blindfolds and the dirty rope, but also the fact that you had uh, Fright Farm associates that were standing inside the haunt, screaming at the top of their lungs at you in a very mean, demeaning way to put your blindfold back on. There actually came a part where I had run into something on the floor. And I started stepping up and I felt like I was going to trip. I had like felt like I had landed in a hole. So I took my blindfold off. I looked down 
and I am standing on a mattress, a mattress full of holes with springs in it. And I'm getting yelled at to put my blindfold back on. I'm like, are you kidding me? This is totally not safe. And you're telling me to step on it regardless with my blindfold on. Are you asking for an accident? Are you asking for someone to come back and see you because that's what you want? I couldn't believe it. I couldn't wait to get out of this haunt. The girl in front of me definitely couldn't wait. Joe was done with it. There was maybe one or two interactions of actors that I could feel where they touched you. I didn't sign a waiver for it. I don't know in the state of Pennsylvania if you have to sign a waiver for it, but I was definitely touched a few times at my ankles, my arms. I wasn't told this when I first went into the attraction. There's a lot going on here that needs to be reworked. If you can bypass paranoia, if you don't like being touched without your knowledge, you don't like um, germs or anything like that, definitely bypass it. It's definitely not enjoyable. It's a great concept, great unique twist, but it definitely needs work. If you're gonna go the pitch black route, just go pitch black. Just block it off, paint it black, have people walk through black with their their hands on the side of the walls. Just make it black. Don't put a blindfold that you never wash over someone's eyes and then have them hold a dirty rope. It was kind of disgusting. I needed to wash my hands. The minute we got out of the attraction, me and Joe went to the bathroom and washed our hands. I'm sorry. It's, I, I know that I'm trying to critique Fright Farm in a very positive way, but unfortunately, it's very hard sometimes to get your point across on how you feel and what you thought of a place in a positive way. I definitely think that Fright Farm has the ability to do some amazing, scary things, but I feel like everything is just kind of thrown together and rushed, and they try too hard. The mansion itself was exquisitely beautiful to look at, the Hayride, I couldn't really judge in all honesty because of drunk patrons. And Paranoia, I think it was a unique twist but failed uh, because of its approach and because of its follow through. I think that if you're going to do a pitch black maze, just do a pitch black maze. Just paint it black and let people walk through. Simple as that. Um, overall, I definitely wouldn't recommend anyone traveling more than an hour to experience Fright Farm. It definitely doesn't live up to the hype. It doesn't live up to the name. In fact, on the website, they say they have four attractions, but they really have three. I personally uh, did not really thoroughly enjoy myself like I have at other attractions. So for me and Joe, Fright Farm, unfortunately, was a major letdown. Well, guys, that's it for the third official review of the 2018 Fright Tour. I know it did come off a little whiny and preachy at times, but it is my job to post honest, unbiased, and truthful reviews of haunted attractions from Maine to the Virginias. If I didn't do that, then you wouldn't know where the best scream for your buck is. I am one opinion. You guys all have one as well. If any of my reviews you disagree with them or concur with them, please post in the comments below and let me know what you think. I strongly encourage it. I strongly recommend it and welcome it. I will reply to you. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel here and our newsletter on our website. Until next time, guys, happy screaming.